Okay, great. I think we are just about ready to go. Um, so thank you all for attending. Um, we're really excited for today's um, event and our panelists who um, are here. We have one panelist who sent in a video and may be joining us later, um, but uh, he's uh, currently um, traveling and in Saudi Arabia. Um, so um, we planned this event uh, to celebrate this year or this past year. Uh, we hit 50,000 users, uh, 50K uh, users in the WEEP forum. Uh, we knew it was going to be happening um, sometime last year. We didn't know exactly when, um, but uh, Jack uh, tracks this information um, as we go along. And so we had an idea more or less. Uh, it happened, uh, Jack, do you remember exactly the date, October? I think it was October 28th. Okay, so yeah, October 28th, uh, just towards the end of the year. Um, and then it also just so happens, uh, WEEP was uh, created in 1989. And so 2024 is the 35th anniversary of our WEEP uh, tool, the water evaluation and planning tool. And, uh, and so we're really excited to be promoting our software and then also just celebrating with users, potential users, um, and our expert users who are on our panel. Um, here on the line, we have Melina Baldarama, Kamir Gavici, and uh, Joy Busolo. And then uh, we also have David Yates um, sent in a video and hopefully he will also be joining us later, um, but we will see based on his internet connection. Um, and so without further ado, uh, Jack's gonna introduce a little bit more about our software. Uh, we also have Lindsay on here for um, technical and communication support. She's their communication expert um, here at the US Water Center um, of the Stockholm Environment Institute. So uh, Jack, if you wanna take us away. Sure, thank you, Marina. Uh, we, I've prepared a short video presentation about WEEP's history and highlights. Uh, but before, before we show that, I'd like to let you know about an initiative we have in support of capacity building in Africa. Uh, at SEI's water program, we believe that sustainable change can only be achieved by empowering communities and building their capacity to address water and food security change, challenges effectively. Our holistic approach combines knowledge sharing and community engagement to create lasting impact. Uh, please consider making a donation today to help building capacity in Africa to enable communities to champion a more equitable and resilient future. And I'll put the link here in the, the chat window for you. Um, Thank you. And, and actually, well, oh, go ahead. Yep. so while we're putting up the video, if people want to put in the chat, where they're joining us from, and uh, maybe uh, if you're a WEEP user and um, and uh, if who you work with or um, how you use WEEP, something like that. So um, just to get a, an idea of, of where everyone's coming from, um, we'd love to see it. And uh, with that, Lindsay, do you wanna go ahead and put on our... In recognition of WEEP's 35th anniversary and of reaching the milestone of 50,000 users, we offer a retrospective of important steps in the evolution of WEEP, highlighting several important features. My name is Jack Sieber, and I have been managing the development of WEEP here at SEI for the past 31 years. Throughout the past 35 years, we've been continually improving WEEP, adding capabilities and features, increasing speed and robustness, improving the website and training materials, and expanding connections with users worldwide. While this video is very fast paced, we will post it on our website so that you can view it again at your own pace. WEEP was initially developed in 1989 by the Stockholm Environment Institute for its internal use. SCI released the first public version in 1991. In the days before Microsoft Windows or the Internet, these early versions were DOS-based with barely any graphical user interface and only rudimentary data controls, tables, and charts. Nonetheless, WEEP provided a structured approach to integrated demand supply analysis. The first application modeled the rapidly diminishing Errol C along with policy scenarios for potential remediation. The following screens show the look and feel of these early versions 
including drop-down menus, data screens, tables, and charts. The schematic was built as a list, not spatially explicit. There was only one main river, and only it could have tributaries. Result visualizations were fairly limited. By the late 90s, Weep had created a graphical drag and drop interface to build the schematic, although there were no background layers, shape files, or ability to zoom in and out. Result visualizations had improved, including an overview with multiple charts. In these screenshots, you can see how the interface has changed and improved. In 2000, SEI created the first Windows version with a GIS-based interface for creating the schematic, sophisticated data expression language for building models, and a linear program solver for allocating demands and supplies across multiple levels of rivers and tributaries. Beyond a simple accounting framework for demands and supplies, it included a physically-based hydrology for simulating rainfall runoff and infiltration, and modules for financial planning, water quality, and wastewater reuse. Results could be displayed on the map, and the interface was translated into French, Korean, Chinese, Spanish, and Portuguese. WEEP can display most of its results on the schematic. This can provide an easy way to visualize how results vary across time and space. Here we can see how the relative magnitude of the various demands and how they vary within each year and across years. Including transmission and return flows shows which supplies are active. And finally, including stream flow makes it clear the major flows in the system. Over 80 volunteers have helped translate the WEEP software and website into 28 different languages. This has helped make it easier to use and more accessible around the world. In the late 2000s, WEEP gained links to external models for groundwater, mod flow, and water quality, Qual2K, and an application programming interface, or API, enabled scripting in Python, JavaScript, or Visual Basic to automate WEEP or build linkages to external models and software. Modules were added for rice paddies, infiltration basins, and retention ponds, and combined sewer overflow, and translations for Arabic, Farsi, Russian, and Thai. In addition to its built-in groundwater model, WEEP can be linked to the widely used USGS ModFlow groundwater model with connections to WEEP's demand sites, catchments, groundwater nodes, rivers, and reservoirs. Here you can see a 3D representation of groundwater levels at a high spatial resolution. The 2010s brought many important changes to WEEP, which you can see listed here. WEEP's Scenario Explorer presents a high-level overview of your model. Think of it as a dashboard with controls and gauges where you can control key model inputs and instantly see how those changes affect results. The user creates the dashboard by adding the most important inputs and outputs. Here we are looking at the sensitivity of the results to reservoir size in the Weeping River Basin. We can easily create new scenarios for smaller and larger reservoirs and compare them to the original scenario. For integrated water energy nexus studies, WEEP can be linked to LEAP, SEI's energy planning software. This simple example explores connections with hydropower, water sector electricity demands, and electricity sector water demands. Data and results can flow in a feedback loop between the two models, providing insights only available in a combined model. WEEP can export schematics and results to Google Earth. This provides a powerful and convenient way to package the results from a WEEP analysis to share with others. Each element is clickable, showing any notes from WEEP. Everything is saved in one file that can be sent via email or posted on a website for others to download and open in Google Earth. Results can be exported in two formats, as slides in an animation or as individual charts for each schematic element. The user chooses which results to include for export for each element. 
Here we see supply requirements and unmet demand and reservoir levels. The late 2010s saw another batch of very significant changes shown here. Perhaps the most important being automatic catchment delineation. WEEP can automatically delineate catchments and rivers using digital elevation data, calculate land area disaggregated by elevation band and land cover, and download climate data for each catchment and elevation band. This greatly simplifies the process of setting up and modeling catchment hydrology. WEEP automatically downloads global data sets for elevation, land cover, and climate as needed. The user can also use their own data sets for land use or climate. WEEP calculates the spatially weighted average for each user-defined elevation band for each climate variable. Here we can see how precipitation, temperature, relative humidity, and wind speed differ by elevation, as well as variation within each year and across years. It is easy to later modify your choices, such as subdividing the basin into different catchments, changing pore points or river head flow locations, or changing which climate or land use data set to use. We will recalculate area and climate based on the new boundaries. In this case, we subdivided the Sacramento Basin into two catchments, representing the two major subwatersheds in the basin. Here are the major changes so far in the current decade. WEEP now includes access to the latest CMIP-6 global gridded climate scenarios, representing daily climate projections out to 2100 for 27 global climate models and four shared socioeconomic pathways. The automatic catchment delineation can automatically download and apply any of these 108 data sets, spatially averaging them for each catchment and elevation band. This makes it very easy to build scenarios comparing multiple possible future climates. WEEP can automatically create a new shapefile that summarizes the climate for each climate grid square in your basin. The summary includes monthly and annual averages for each climate variable. The layer is added as a background layer on the schematic. By displaying a summary attribute as a thematic map, for example, average temperature or precipitation, you can quickly see how the climate varies across the basin. Show info charts to see all months for the location under the mouse. WEEP can calculate scenarios in parallel to greatly speed up calculations. In this demo, we are calculating 16 scenarios, four in each of the four separate copies of WEEP. Once each copy is finished calculating, it sends the results back to the main instance of WEEP for display. WEEP can automatically download and display background maps from several internet sources, such as USGS, OpenStreetMap, Google, National Geographic, and Esri. These include satellite images, street maps, and topographic maps, and can be very helpful when building your WEEP model. Once you have chosen a layer, you can pan and zoom on the schematic, and WEEP will download and display the background tiles. While we have always been driven in our WEEP development by user needs, we do also have our own ideas for future improvements. While my to-do list is nearly endless, major tasks include the ability to publish the Scenario Explorer view to web-based dashboards for online exploration, collaborative model building for teams like Google Docs, help streamline and automate our robust decision support stakeholder process, increased access to public databases such as soil, climate, water demands, and reservoirs, and building serious games for interactive, wheat-based simulations with stakeholders. We are currently working to move WEEP's Scenario Explorer to the web, where online visitors could see how changing data assumptions might impact results without the need to install WEEP on their computer. Over the past 35 years, more than 1,000 papers using WEEP have been published by SEI and other researchers. Here is a simple spatial analysis of many of those publications. And finally, I want to thank all the people and institutions that have supported and used WEEP over the past 35 years, including developers, collaborators, funders, trainers, translation volunteers, and everyday users. 
Weep would not be as powerful or as easy to use as it is today without your help and feedback. Thank you so much, Jack, for creating that video. Um, just as a note, and I see in the chat, um, people are interested, we are posting the video on our website. And so um, we'll put the link to that uh, on the WEEP website. And so we'll put the link to that um, in the chat and then it will also be available um, from now on there. Um, I just want to also note, uh, now that we've gotten everybody's or many of your responses. Um, we have, just as we have our WEEP forum members from all over the world, um, we also have a huge representation today at this event. Um, Colombia, Mexico, uh, Kenya, India, uh, the Netherlands, um, Tajikistan, uh, the list goes on and on, um, Iran. Uh, it's really great to see. Um, Zimbabwe, um, we're really, really happy to, here in California, where our, um, Cal our one of our US offices is located, also in Seattle, um, our uh, comms um, support Lindsay, um, and then of course, um, uh, our panel as well um, from different regions in the world. Um, so we're really excited to see you all here. And um, we also wanted to share a couple of video testimonials of some of our user base um, that we requested for this event. So we have um, a second video that talks a little bit about some of our users' personal experiences with Weep and how they've used it over the years. Um, so Lindsay, if you can throw that up there. WIP allow, allows me uh, to model different river basins and entire water and resources systems and for research and propose strategies to improve uh, water resources management in Peru. WIP helps me understand the complexity and provide solutions to solve water resources management problems in river basins. My favorite uh, features are the uh, hydrological modeling using the soil moisture method and the reservoir management. Um, the idea is how we can uh, analyze the behavior of the basins under uh, climate change, how is going to change the hydrological and dynamics of the basins, for example, under climate change, under no stationary conditions, and what kind of the policies we need to implement to manage uh, the reservoirs, the water resources si system in general. Thank you very much, Jat, for the invitation to give uh, uh, this word for everybody. Thank you. A project I chose WIP because it includes modules for snow and particularly for glacier representation, which is not so common in water resources systems modeling tools. This work allowed me to provide recommendations on adaptation measures to improve the provision of freshwater ecosystem services and the conservation of endangered aquatic species in mountain environments. The things that I like more about WIP, uh, one has to be the advanced programming interface that has allowed me to explore the benefits of considering additional processes, for example, glacier processes through uh, the incorporation of new calculations. Uh, so congratulations, WIP team. We organized a small water parliament uh, with around 100 seats, which brings together the decision makers, the water users and uh, the state uh, services. And uh, my job is to make sure that uh, uh, the peop these, these people have the technical key uh, to, to take the best decision uh, for water management today and in the future. We decided to, to make a, a WIP model to, to make easier the discussion in this parliament and to bring uh, uh, a scientific matter to the discussion. I can uh, say that uh, there is a real gain to use a, a WIP to have uh, the WIP model. 
the, the, the most the, the most important gain is uh, I think the improvement of uh, collective uh, knowledge and understanding of what a resource um, uses uh, infrastructure derivation and uh, the management management and the water allocation uh, today and uh, the best way to to discuss uh, what has to be the water allocation in the future. And I think the second advantage of to have a WIP model is the credibility because it's a scientific approach. We have a numeric uh, model that uh, brings together a, a lot of uh, data related to water management. And uh, as we are a uh, neutral organism, it's, uh, it's important uh, and it gives us a, a good credibility. Problem. Thank you. Yeah. WEAP has transformed my work as well, as well as the work at my organization. For Valley Water's long-term water supply planning, I've seen WEAP be most effective in, its, in a recent effort by Valley Water to evaluate proposed reservoir operating rules in three main watersheds in our area that are intended to mainly benefit anadromous fish in, in our local streams while balancing our water supply needs. We worked with SEI to add custom parameters that calculate dozens of fish habitat metrics through various life stages that are based on flow and channel geometry at key points of interest downstream of several reservoirs. This WEEP daily model allowed Valley Water to evaluate multiple proposed operating rule scenarios and select a preferred scenario that is now moving to actual implementation. For me, this is the most valuable thing that WEEP has provided for us, a way to evaluate scenarios and provide a basis for the selection of a preferred set of operating rules. I honestly don't know how we would have been able to move forward without WEEP. I always, I always appreciate that SEI is working to add functionality to WEEP. And for me personally, I just want to thank everyone at SEI for the great support uh, over more than 10 years. That's our experience of using WEEP goes back to around 15 years ago during our master's program at the University of Tehran. Back then, we were using WIP in our class projects, trying to understand its different capabilities. When we moved to US to do our fellowship at UC Davis, we had a chance to work at SCI. That's when we better understood uh, how powerful this tool is, how it can be used to address sector conflicts, how it can be used to uh, do the decision making and support the decision making, and how it helps cross-sectoral communication. Uh, using WIP has really helped us to uh, shape our mind around integrated water system analysis, how different components are connected and how they affect each other. Working uh, in SEI gave us the opportunity to get to know the developer team of this powerful program. Uh, and we realized how lovely and nice people they are who are constantly trying to uh, work on improving and upgrading this tool. Uh, our collaboration and relationship continued even after leaving Davis to the time that we were in Sweden for a postdoc or now that we are in Australia. And they have been great mentors, colleagues and friends for us. Fantastic. Thank you, Lindsay. Um, so I think as you all can see, um, there's a broad use of WEEP. Um, there are many different types of users. Um, also, as we can see in the chat, uh, and we're so excited to be able to provide a tool that can reach so many different kinds of users and for so many different types of applications. Um, and so now we're going to move on to our panel of experts. I did want to note one thing um, in the chat. There are some very specific technical questions. I think one uh, one forum also to um, to look for answers to these types of questions is exactly our WEEP forum um, on the WEEP website. Uh, oftentimes, people have similar issues or questions to you, and so you can check that out. Um, and then also, uh, we do have a lot of training opportunities 
um, through, and Jack just put it in the chat. Uh, we do also have a lot of training opportunities uh, through uh, SEI US um, and our other SEI um, Stockholm Environment Institute uh, centers. Um, and so if you are interested in those, um, you can follow us on our social media and we announce those periodically. Um, and then uh, and then there's also, you know, uh, individual uh, and then it's also available there on our website through the, the training link. Um, and uh, as a, a multinational organization, uh, we do work with projects all over the world um, and uh, specifically for um, anything from academic institutions to government agencies um, to uh, private applications. And, um, and so uh, um, definitely get in touch with us if you are looking for um, kind of larger project applications um, uh, for applying WEEP. Um, and uh, so now we're gonna move over to um, some of these applications that um, and relationships that we have built at uh, SEI US over the years. Um, and our panel of experts, we're going to start with Melina Balderrama, uh, who is a, a coordinator for our Bolivia Water Sanitation and Hygiene Thinking Connected to Hydrology or Bolivia Watch program. Um, so if you can, uh, Melina, uh, go ahead and, uh, and take it away. Thank you very much uh, to everyone. For me, it's a very pleasure to keep in touch with the WIP developers team and also with the SEI uh, family. Um, I will uh, please to present my experience working in Bolivia Watch program. As a context, uh, Bolivia is in the center of South America with territorial extension of more than 1 million of square kilometers. Its population is about uh, 12 million inhabitants. It participates in three macro basins, Del Plata, Amazonia, and, and the Rake. The water availability is more than 49,000 cubic meters per capita per year. And the water consumption per capita is 2.5. 14 cubic meters per year. However, even that we are in the top 20 uh, countries with more availability of water, we have uh, many challenges to manage the water in a fair, inclusive, equitable, and intelligent way. Uh, some illustrative comparisons with Egypt, with a similar surface of Egypt, uh, ha, Bolivia has uh, 20, uh, Egypt has 20 times the population of Bolivia and almost a tenth of the water availability. Despite this, we are going to uh, share our main challenges in water management. Let's see our challenges. 87% of Bolivian citizens have access to drinking water, less than uh, 65% uh, have access to sanitation. Just 570,000 of hectares are under irrigation systems. 27% of Bolivian citizens have access to hand washing facilities, soap and water in their homes. 58% uh, house, households have wastewater treatment. Just 1% of the renewable water is extracted considering ecological flow. Just 52% just of the water resources are under integrated water resource management. Just 76 uh, or 66 of the, our international waters have agreements and 16% of the water resources are suffering rapid changes affecting the ecosystem. In terms of SDG number six, during the last years, we are just moderately improving and we are not going to accomplish our goals until the uh, 2030 agenda. And uh, these are some of the reasons why Bolivia Watch 
program exists connect the basin planning with sanitation and our uh, challenges to have a fairly and um, more equitable management of the water. A Bolivia Watch Program is a project from SEI portfolio, was financed uh, by Swedish Corporation and requested by the Ministry of Environment and Water of Bolivia. Its mission focuses in on producing basin master plans as resource plan and management instruments based on the use of the WIP tool to reduce uncertainty. Bolivar, Bolivia Watch worked in three basins with complex problems such as mining activities, the dynamic not resolved are originate uh, from the rural and urban areas interactions and their pressures on sanitation and drinking water systems in which an important part of the population in Bolivia is concentrated. The three basins are Isa, Pampawari, and La Paz. And also in the framework of our program, we uh, study the impact of fires in the water resource in the more um, in a specific ecosystem that is called Chiquitania, that is part of the Amazonic region. Uh, we work with uh, the master basin plans as tools that are designed to know uh, the current situation of the basin at the level of the hydroclimatic, social, economic, and territorial information. Based on this information, the plans design strategies for intervention actions that improve the access and equitable use of the water in quantity and quality. Therefore, the BMPs, that is basin master plans, start from a technical process uh, based on the information that we can collect uh, in, uh, from uh, primary and second uh, uh, resources. Um, the starting line from the formulation of the basic master's plans in Bolivia is information contained in the model modeling of the national water balance. That study is carried out with WIP tool. Uh, WIP and the um, four additional tools were coupled to strengthen the comprehensiveness of the study of the hydrological, social, and ecosystem dynamics of the study uh, of the studied uh, basins. With the framework of Bolivia Watch program, the five tools that we call the SEI toolbox for water planning and integrated was integrated for the first time which reduces with the purpose to reduce the uncertainties with the re generation of a robust decision-making scenarios and promotes the dialogue among the actors who were supported by the results of the scientific technical interaction of the tools. The five tools are uh, shown in this slide that are WIP in the central because it, it is, is the core, WAT, REBAM, Wash flows and NTDP. Let's try to explain uh, uh, a very brief uh, description of that uh, uh, couple of tools. What watershed, watershed topology tool allows to include the analysis of the altitudinal gradient between its low, medium, and high basin areas that has influence on the temperature, precipitation, evaporation, speed of surface run out due to the slope of the basins and others. Wash flows allows WIP to provide a scaling of water supply and demand at the household's level. Users of drinking water and sanitation systems are represented by very small consumption scales with respect to the scale of the hydrodynamics units of a basin. These tools allow to integrate this integration in both 
demand flows, outputs, and supply flows, the entries, in a circular approach that considers water reuse. Revamp is another tool that is coupled to WIP to calculate the recovery value of nutrients for agriculture that comes from domestic wastewater. The results are useful for decision makers who will promote the wastewater treatment and its reuse. And finally, the MTDP that is coming from the Spanish acronym that means Model for Decision Making Participatory Process. It's a tool that facilitates the dialogue and the participation of the stakeholders. It's applying the process for assessment of the intervention actions and for defining the action strategies. It has three main components. The first, this analytical tools, the second indicator for visualization interface, and three, the decision panel. With an additional tools created by ACI, improve the planning process in the management of water resources in Bolivia, making planning process more equitable, fairer, and with less uncertainty. This allows that the basins will improve their conditions and their, the basins inhabitants will improve their quality of life. In addition, the basins uh, stakeholders will exercise the governance based on a knowledge that uh, knowledge and scientific evidence. That's why we are so uh, pleased to use that kind of uh, instruments, that kind of tools that allows to, to Bolivia to improve and to reduce that gaps that I present at the beginning of my presentation. Thank you very much. And this is our contribution. Thank you so much, Melina. And it's so exciting to see all the applications and connections that we can make with other tools as well um, and in the development of tools. We really appreciate everything that you've done in, in facilitating that uh, connection to um, government of Bolivia and, uh, and the planning of water resources in, uh, in Bolivia. Um, so now we're gonna move on to uh, Kamir Gavechi, um, who, is, uh, <laughs> who is the manager of division planning with the California Department of Water Resources, DWR. So I'm going to share presentation now. And... You can hear me. Oh, is that the right? Yep. Yep. Okay. We can hear you all right. Thank you. Um, so good morning, everyone, or maybe good evening uh, and night, depending on where you are around the world. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Marina and the SEI Davis California team for this uh, invitation and opportunity to join this webinar and share with you our work at the Department of Water Resources in California uh, on the California Water Plan and more recently on uh, analyses supporting the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. Uh, I also want to thank all the participants for joining today. It is quite impressive, uh, all the different countries who are uh, represented in this event. Um, DWR um, has used the uh, WEEP model uh, for our future scenario planning for the California Water Plan, uh, as well as the uh, SIGMA, or Sustainable Groundwater Management Act analyses. And it's been uh, founded or based on a partnership and technical collaboration with SEI in Davis, California, for uh, about 18 years and spanning four updates of the California Water Plan. Uh, next slide, please. So I like to share with folks that the California Water Plan, the first one that DWR published was in 1957. Uh, that's the year I was born. So uh, we're uh, the same age. I'm actually one month older. Uh, and over the... Uh, history of the California Water Plan, which uh, includes 13 updates. Uh, the focus of each update has 
has evolved depending on the conditions and um, the focus uh, and needs of the state of California. So early on, um, the focus was uh, resource extraction for the purpose of socioeconomic growth. Um, then during the 50s and 70s, extensive infrastructure, water infrastructure expansion. Uh, and then during the 70s on, uh, there were unintended environmental consequences from that resource extraction approach and uh, development and uh, environmental protections and uh, regulations to begin to reverse some of those uh, adverse effects. More recently, the focus of water management in California has been integrated water management, uh, watershed resilience and sustainability, and then uh, really looking seriously at climate adaptation and racial justice in our water management system. So the most recent update, the 2023, the final uh, plan should be coming out in the next few weeks. And the three themes of this update uh, is uh, climate urgency and adaptation, watershed resilience, uh, and equity in water management. Next slide, please. So the water plan updates in the 21st century over the last uh, 20 some years has really tr been transformative and pioneered a number of innovations. And that includes expanded participation and transparency of how the plan is made and who gets to help inform it. Uh, looking seriously at climate change impacts and how to adapt to it. Uh, integrated watershed management as the approach for really integrating the various water management sectors from headwater to groundwater to outflow. Uh, environmental stewardship and recognizing that our natural and green infrastructure is an important part uh, of water management uh, and has to be uh, treated that way. Uh, also, making sure that we manage our water in a way that increases resilience and sustainability from all aspects, environment, economy, and equity. And then recognizing that the water plan, while it is uh, important for informing water policies and decisions, has a very strong technical foundation in its data analyses uh, and research and development recommendations. So um, for all the reasons you've already heard in the great video uh, and the testimonials uh, and the panel discussions, uh, the WEEP model really seamlessly fit all of these major priorities uh, that we have had over the last couple of decades. Next slide, please. So it, it has been a journey over this time. Uh, prior to using the WEEP model, DWR, uh, as part of the requirement of the water plan, has to look at future uh, supply and demand conditions and water management. And in the past, prior to WEEP, we used multiple and separate models for trying to do that. We did not include, and they could not really accommodate climate change analysis at that time. So our first uh, application of WEEP was to develop what we call the hydrologic region WEEP model that covers all 10 hydrologic regions of California. And just so that you appreciate, each of those 10 hydrologic regions are the size of other states and some countries, and they are very different in their uh, conditions and priorities. So what this hydrologic region model uh, uh, enabled us to do was to focus on urban, agricultural, and environmental water demands, including how they would be affected uh, by climate change. Uh, so we included in the 20, 
uh, in the 2009 water plan update, analyses using three demographic scenarios around different levels of population growth up through 2050. We had our historical hydrology as our baseline, plus 12 climate change scenarios uh, coming from downscaled global climate model scenarios. Next slide, please. Now, the hydrologic region model uh, being at the very large course um, uh, scale did not enable us uh, to do water supply scenarios. So for the 2013 update, we worked with SEI uh, and, and other uh, uh, partners, uh, such as Land Corp uh, RAND Corporation uh, and um, uh, NCAR, uh, to uh, develop what we call the Central Valley Planning Area WEEP model, shown uh, on this slide. So that covers three of the uh, hydrologic regions. The reason they're uh, of significance and why we focused on them first and foremost is because they include the two largest rivers of California, the Sacramento River and the San Joaquin River and their tributaries, as well as the Tulare Lake region in the Southern air, uh, section there, that is one of our largest agricultural production regions of, of California. Now, by going to the Central Valley planning area model, we were able to uh, simulate both water demand and water supplies. And for 2013 update of the water plan, we increased uh, our demographic scenarios to nine, again, through 2050. Uh, and we used the same uh, climate, 12 climate change scenarios based on global climate model downscaling. Uh, for 2018 water plan, uh, we pretty much up, updated that analysis uh, using the most recent um, global climate uh, model projections or scenarios up through 2100. So we increased our time horizon through 2100. Next slide, please. So for the 2023 uh, update of the water plan, our big, biggest innovation was moving toward what we call decision scaling climate vulnerability assessment. And this is a risk-based uh, approach for climate uh, vulnerability. Uh, and it, it, it enables us to not only look at the range of variation based on climate, but also the probabilities of occurrence um, of that. And so in doing that, we actually simulated um, 43 different, 42 different climate scenarios plus our baseline, and each one of them for 1,100 years uh, of analysis using the WEEP model. Now, to do that, we worked with uh, the uh, SEI team at Davis to uh, make code modifications and data input and output modifications so that anyone using the WEEP model throughout the world can now also apply decision scaling risk-based climate analysis uh, to your work. Next slide, please. So by moving from uh, a downscaled global climate change model approach to including uh, and adding to it a decision scaling approach, we moved from just being able to look at time series of analysis to uh, risk-based insights, uh, looking at 2020 as our current condition and 2070 uh, as our future level of development. And we can then generate these contour maps, looking at variations of temperature, looking on the uh, y-axis, and variation in precipitation, both less than uh, current and more than current. Next slide. Thank you. Uh, so for the 2023 update, these are two of the figures that appear in, in the water plan. So the one on the left is a, a spider plot that demonstrates the probability of increased vulnerability uh, for six core parameters that we selected uh, to uh, present. 
And the, the three different color bands are one for each of those three hydrologic regions, the Sacramento Valley, the San Joaquin Valley, and the Tal Tulare Lake hydrologic region. Uh, the figures, to, uh, bar charts to the right, show the magnitude of change for those six parameters for each of those three hydrologic regions, both for what is possible, uh, uh, probable, for the 2040 uh, uh, time range or time uh, domain and what could be possible for by 2070. Next slide, please. So I mentioned that we also use WEEP to um, support the implementation of the Sustainable Groundwater Management Act. One of the provisions of that act uh, was directing the Department of Water Resources to determine or estimate how much water well, is available in each of the 10 hydrologic regions for the purpose of groundwater recharge and aquifer replenishment. So let me just note, if you don't already know, that the Sigma Act went into effect about 10 years ago. And that was for the first time that the state of California uh, had oversight uh, or has oversight uh, over groundwater management in California. So the DWR uh, team using WEEP uh, developed um, WEEP models for each of the 10 hydrologic regions to look at the natural flow variability uh, and estimating how much water would be available uh, for groundwater recharge. Next slide. So all of this work is based on uh, many, many, many hours uh, and uh, effort by many people uh, presented on this slide. Uh, I also want to uh, note that the Water Plan Statewide Water Analysis Network, or SWAN, uh, was um, a technical advisory committee that over helped us uh, in our WEEP development and in our WEEP implementation. Next slide. And I think that's my last slide. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you so much, Kamir. And as you all can see, that uh, WEEP has been used in many different applications at statewide water and uh, surface water and groundwater management. Um, and we are so excited to be able to work with um, DWR over the years and continue that work going forward. Um, and hopefully we'll also have some more news about how uh, we have used WEEP um, and how DWR has used WEEP um, coming soon. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and, uh, and we'll be providing more details in, in other um, communications materials going forward. Um, and uh, and yes, we will include um, the contact information for all of our speakers um, on the event page, um, and then also uh, their information is up there, so you can visit um, their uh, uh, institutional websites um, from the, the event page. Um, just as a reminder, we're going to be doing a Q&A session at the end of the panelist presentation, so if you have questions, um, one, I can see your hands are raised, but also if you want to go ahead and put them in the Q&A um, window, you can write your, your questions there and then we can, um, we can definitely get to those at the end of the presentations. Um, so now we're going to have our, um, our video presentation from David Yates. Um, he's currently traveling, so he's unable to make it today, um, but he'll be, um, David Yates is uh, our presenter from, um, the, uh, uh, he's a scientist in the Research Applications Laboratory uh, at NCAR, which is the uh, National Center for um, Atmospheric Research, and he's located normally in Boulder, Colorado. So, um, Lindsay, if you can go ahead and put his video on. Hi, good. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time zone you might find yourself in. Pleasure being here as part of this event to that it is acknowledging this threshold of more than 50,000 users in the as part of the week forum um seeing i think at sei thought this was a good time to kind of 
pause and, and reflect a little bit about where we've come with WEEP and perhaps think a little bit about where we might head it into the future. So pleasure to be part of this event. Uh, I'm David Yates. I'm a scientist at the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Boulder, Colorado, but probably more importantly for this event, um, I'm also an associate of the Stockholm Environment Institute. So I'm just going to spend, you know, five, six minutes here talking a little bit about my experience with WEEP. I don't have, I have no slides, to, you know, a set of points here that I'm going to use as a, as a reminder as I talk through I'm having to record this because I'm traveling, so worried that I might not have internet access. So, so I don't know if anybody's ever done these kinds of recordings. They're not easy, so I'm, I'll do my best here. So, um, uh, just want to take a, a minute to sort of not uh, take a minute to acknowledge some of my collaborators. If I can move it forward, uh, uh, David Perkey, who's now the Latin America Office um, uh, Director in Bogota, Colombia; Chuck Young and and uh, Brian Joyce and Annette Huber Lee, who uh, I've worked with over the last more than twenty years on thinking about how to use and apply WEEP for integrated water resources management. And then special, sort of a special recognition of Jack Sieber, who, uh, you know, is really the brains behind WEEP as the lead software engineer and developer, who none of us would be working on WEEP without Jack. So thanks, Jack, for all you've, you've done in, in advancing WEEP. And hopefully us uh, a scientist have been a, a big part of helping envision some of the aspects of it as well. So just tell a little, again, history of my work with WEEP. I, I had this marker in is September 11th, 2001, where I found myself in Davis, California, on an uh, where we had a new EPA project, and I think Annette was there, and David Perkey was there. Um, and uh, this was a project around it, kind of looking at the vulnerabilities, impact, and adaptation options of climate change. And this was kind of where we envisioned what we affectionately called the green dot object in WEEP. For those that are familiar with WEEP as an object-based model, we have all sorts of different of, of object types, you know, demand objects, river objects. The green dot object is the catchment object where attributes of the watershed exist and where climate variables can go in. And, you know, this one could argue that some of the success in WEEP over the last 20 years was the introduction of the green dot because instead of water systems models, the boundary condition being reservoir, excuse me, river flows, it could now be climate data, climate time series, where we have a physical hydrology representation of, of the watershed. And then we have time series of precipitation, temperature, and run physical hydrology and generate stream flow that gets into into the river object that gets moved to the reservoir object and where we can manage water so that was the epa project where this this notion of the the integration of physical hydrology within the water system a water management system first um, was realized this project um, in california this epa project led to quite a bit of additional work in california um, where, uh, you know, where the merits of WEEP as this sort of integrating modeling platform was realized. So we did, you know, worked with uh, several different agencies, um, uh, organizations throughout California, where WEEP, again, as a more of a generic water systems modeling tool was really um, exemplified. In fact, if you look at a lot of the publications, you see applications around ecosystem services, for example, this is also a time where we started to work with water utilities. Just mentioned one, the El Dorado Irrigation District. It was really an interesting project where we used WEEP to look at drought plans and, um, you know, really did some economic econ econometric modeling with WEEP and, and really demonstrated that WEEP is really, yes, it's a, it's it, it it's water centric, but it's really a generic water systems modeling tool. So, um, in fact, I've always prided myself to think to say that there's never been a water problem I haven't been able to solve really with wheat because it allows this flexibility of being able to create relationships and, you know, call it models of models. And so, you know, e even within the it work with the El Dorado Irrigation District and their drought plans, we did uh, an e econometrics model where we, we looked at the monetization of, of drought plans. 
It was also during this time where we started working with uh, the Department, California Department of Water Resources, CAMIAR, who's also a part of our, our the forum here today, um, and worked with the uh, contributed to the the California Water Plan. And again, the merits of WEEP is this integrating tool where climate change could be integrated into the analysis was, was put forward. I think that was around 2008 where, in, uh, where SEI made a strong contribution to the water plan using WEEP. Um, let's see, yeah, so the California's water plan. Um, uh, so those are some of the kind of highlights of projects that that highlighted again the integrated nature of wheat, the flexibility of wheat. We also started at that time to do quite a bit of international work. Um, you know, one of the one of the things that I think makes wheat novel is in in both of its ele you know, its its simplest its its elegant simplicity, but also its ability to be very sophisticated. And we've demonstrated that with doing building very simple models of very simple water systems to very complex water systems. I'd say during this time too, one element that that you know, call us a weepers acknowledged was the the challenge of data processing. Um, a lot of this work in you know in the late you know 2008 through 2015, what uh, a lot of the the pre processing of data sets was centered around the use of of GIS tools to generate um, watershed attributes, water, you know, catchment boundaries, um, creating climate time series was done outside of WEEP. Um, and so it was, it was um, I don't know how long it's been, maybe eight years, maybe not that long, where again, the genius of Jack Sieber shined and uh, the development of of the catchment delineation tool and i think this this kind of capability this kind of innovation that has been part of you know the continual advancement of wheat really for more than 30 years under jack's leadership has led to this you know this large community of users because it keeps innovating it keeps advancing and things like the catchment delineation tool have been fundamental to that um, the catchment delineation tool then also acknowledged the need to be able to link to these gridded data sets. Give an example here of NetCDF, which is a, a standard in the atmospheric sciences for uh, a data standard um, for storing, you know, geographic data of any sort. And 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 Weep or Weep Jack and the team, the Weep team. Uh, you know, made this link of being able to take NetCDF files in addition to the catchment delineation tool. And so now in WEEP, instead of having to do a lot of GIS pre-processing, we can use tools like the catchment delineation tool to, um, to develop our data sets. And I really find that this capability allows, you know, you, you kind of this rapid development of, of data sets that can be used in the WEEP framework. And now the analyst, like, you know, the, the, the model builder can spend more time building the model than building data sets. Um, a, a really powerful WEEP advancement. And this again was, if you, you know, even, even in the last couple of years, Jack has um, linked to um, large data sets like the, the climate model inter, inter comparison, the CMIP data set, CMIP 6. So we've got this global data set. And so again, allowing almost, you know, anybody in the world to be able to take WEEP and quickly build a WEEP model of their application. Um, say, uh, you know, I, I, I find the one of my f f favorite sayings is, is a model useful and easy to use. And I think that's one of WEEP's greatest merits is that, um, you know, going and having trained uh, people on how to use WEEP, it, it quickly is tangible to, to folks. They quickly get the context, they get how it works, and they can get up and running and building their model quickly, even though it might be a simple model. And yet, a WEEP then also allows a real um, a, the ability to build really complex models as well. Uh, you know, the the, the powerful um, application programming interface is really made uh, building um, uh, you know again models of models uh, very um, uh, useful. And again, for 
this this range of of, of a, a novice user to a moderate user to what we call you know a power users weep weep affords all that kind of that that range of applicability um say you know what's next with weep uh i, I just take a minute to just muse a little bit about um uh, some of the things that are going on even in the um, in the water resources planning world. I was at AGU in the in the, in December in San Francisco where there were for the hydrology session they had to have multiple sessions because there was so much interest in machine learning and AI. And uh, I think that's a big frontier for WEEP, this idea of bringing in machine learning algorithms and processes into 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 the system. Um, one of the things that is a, is a barrier is that we do need to make this transition from the software side from being a 32-bit architecture to a 64-bit architecture where then we can take advantage of, um, of some of the um, like Python packages. Again, one of the powerful things of WEEP is its application programming interface, the ability to, to use Python, for example, to build models of models. Um, a couple other, you know, a couple other sort of application areas, um, you know, WEEP, I'd love to see WEEP, you know, we call it a planning model, but I think it the, also the idea of WEEP um, in or perhaps even for flood early warning uh, tool for doing flood forecasting. I don't see any reason why WEEP could not um, handle that problem. In fact, recently I've been working with Jack to uh, move or have a time step that is sub daily. So we've been able to go down to time steps as short as 20 minutes um, to address, um, you know, reservoir inflows or, or flash, not flash flooding problems, but flooding pot problems, perhaps, you know, forecast the FIRO, the forecast informed reservoir operations, which I think need time steps um, as, you know, shorter than a day. So uh, those are some things that I think would love to see WEEP um, advance towards again, uh, you know, AI, machine learning, and uh, sub-daily time steps. So with that, I will end uh, my my presentation. Hopefully, I'll be able to be online for the discussion, um, but uh, happy and uh, to see where WEEP has come and looking forward to its future. Thank you. Fantastic. So, um, unfortunately, uh, we are, um, well, let's see. Yeah. So, um, David was not able to make it, um, to, uh, the panel today. Um, like I said earlier, he's traveling, um, but really great to see and especially hear him talk about the future opportunities, um, for, uh, features within WEEP and a very technical view of WEEP. Um, he's one of our really advanced technical users um, and works with us really uh, closely as an associate at the Stockholm Environment Institute. So we're just really glad to, to work with him regularly. Um, and then our final speaker is Joy Busolo. Um, also, as a reminder um, from the chat, sorry, uh, I see that there's some interest in trainings. Um, those again are available um, and open to the public. Uh, when there will be um, trainings available uh, uh, on our website, which is in the chat, um, but also a reminder that all the attendees um, today uh, who are registered um, will also be entered into a raffle for a free training, um, and those are the same trainings that are offered on our website. Um, so uh, thank you so much, and thank you, Doug, um, for plugging our trainings there. Um, and so now we will hear from Dre Busolo. Um, and uh, so we've heard a lot from uh, research um, and planning applications. And now we're going to hear um, from Dre Busolo, a senior climate change specialist at the World Bank Group, um, from a bit of a perspective uh, from implementation um, and, uh, and applications kind of moving towards um, uh, finding uh, how we can uh, use WEEP to really inform implementation. So take it away. Joy, thank you. Um, great. Um, just checking. Do you see my screen in full? We see. Oh, there you go. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, yeah. So thanks for that introduction, and um, 
I'll, I'll be giving a perspective of, of some of the work that the World Bank has done together with SEI in, in one of the countries. But I'd just like to start by mentioning that there's so much more that SEI has done together with the bank in very many different geographies. Um, so today I'll just focus particularly on Rwanda because this is work that I I, I, I led and, and so, so much easier for me to speak on something that I was involved in. Um, and um, um, at that particular time, I was with a, with a water team um, and now moved on to the climate change side. But as we all know, water is very much at the center of climate change. So a lot of the work that I did in Rwanda is still very, very much applicable to my, my current role. Um, so it started back then in around 2020 when um, the government of Rwanda requested um, one of our trust fund programs, which I was leading at that time, to provide an uh, analytical assessment that would support um, establishment of partnerships, you know, looking at how can governments work more closely with, with private sector and other development partners to identify, so where are the risks and what are the opportunities for investments when it comes to um, water security for, for Rwanda? And also most particularly is what is useful to guide dialogue, to bring the different stakeholders, what is of interest to government, what is of interest to private sector, what is of interest to the other development partners um, when it comes to looking at a water resilient economy for Rwanda. So, so we then had discussions with the government and agreed on uh, hydroeconomic and climate change analysis. And while we were doing this work, WIP was very useful, a very useful tool that helps us to, to helped us to do this analytical work. It was able to help us show, so where or which sectors, is it irrigation, is it agriculture, is it um, in the environment side, is it is it more on the hydropower energy sectors, or which geographical areas are likely to experience you know, future water resource challenges that could, could affect the growth of, of the economy in Rwanda. And what also um, helped us in this assessment was looking into, so what plans does the government have in place? Uh, what is it looking at doing in the future in terms of growing these sectors and then building around um, different scenarios to see what does it mean to have a water resilient economy for Rwanda? So we had three, three scenarios that we looked at at that particular time. And, and the business as usual scenario was looking at um, what if we stay with the plans that the government has? What does the future when it comes to water supply and demand look like? And where are the gaps and where are the risks? And if we are to build in the government's plan, which was vision 2050 at that time, then how does that change? Um, and to balance these two, then we had something in the middle that we call the water resilient scenario that was looking at the different trade-offs and, um, and then use that to make policy and investment recommendations to um, to the government. So on top of this, we also really looked into different climate scenarios in terms of um, the temperature and rainfall trends and building this upon the, the uh, water supply demand gap and really looking at how does climate change then impact um, the future of um, the water resources and, and the, how it impacts the economy of Rwanda going into the future. So we combined all these projections and scenarios and then were able to eventually um, make recommendations in terms of policies and investments um, for Rwanda. And, and this then led to these two publications that you're seeing on the screen. So one that dived very much on the water side and where the WIP was very useful was the uh, hydroeconomic and climate change analysis. But then this was used as a deep dive of providing additional information into the country's climate change and development report. Um, so the WIP tool uh, really helped us or help really facilitated kind of looking into the water supply demand gap. And for Rwanda particularly, we looked into the, you know, the sectors that you are seeing on the screen. And, and when um, Kamiya was speaking and uh, actually the first speaker was really taking us through the WIP tool, it was good to see how, you know, a similar diagram you know, was being shown from, from the WIP tool. And so that, that kind of just relates on how the tool has been used in different places. And in this particular space, so we looked at different sectors, we had data from the government side and using that as input into the tool to really help us understand. So which are the key water use sectors and how does the demand look like going into the future, building onto all the different projections that we are looking at. Um, key sectors for Rwanda that was really, um, 
instrumental in this was, of course, on the domestic side or domestic use of water. And then on the agriculture side, a little bit, a bit on the industry side, but most importantly is on the hydropower as well. So Rwanda is very dependent on hydropower. And this was important to look at the river flows and the reservoir releases and how that affects, um, you know, development or the plans that the government has in place. And, and that was one of the key recommendations that was coming out of um, out of this analysis is to look at how do we support the government to balance um, its dependence on hydropower by using um, other sources of energy. Um, in addition to this was um, the connection between the WIP tool and also the macroeconomic analysis. And this was important um, for this analysis uh, because we needed to look at the macroeconomy of, of Rwanda and look at how does then the water dependent sectors really uh, play into the economic output and some of the water constraints that we were looking at. So uh, we had the WIP tool on one side and we had an economic model on the other side with different inputs coming on on the economic side and then overlaying this to be able to give us different outputs that are also looking at um, how does this then affect the, the GDP? How does this then affect the economy going into the future? And what are some of the linkages between the different sectors and using that to analyze you know, the upstream and downstream demand of water um, going into the future? So eventually the analysis was able to provide various sets of results that helped us to inform the policy recommendation. One and most important, was the water demand projections across the, the three different scenarios. So we had the baseline scenario, business as usual, and then we looked into the vision 2050 and you can see how, for example, irrigation was a big plan for Rwanda, uh, but using the WIP tool and looking at the water use, we were able to then come up with something in the middle that we call the water resilient um, scenario that looks at how can we have some trade-offs um, around um, you know, the plans for irrigation and balancing with other other options. Um, also, on in terms of storage, I had one of the speakers speaking about how WIP tool has been used to, to really look into storage. This was also very important for Rwanda, um, and it was able to help us see so how what are some of the benefits um, when it comes to increasing storage, and how does that then play across when it comes to the GDP. Um, the other chart that you're seeing is really how we use the tool to see the special coverage of irrigation demands in Rwanda. Um, it's one country that's highly dependent on agriculture and had very big plans when it comes to um, expanding irrigation um, in the country. And so that was very useful for us to understand. So where are the plans and how can we uh, plan this going forward? So those are some of the outputs that um, this analysis was able to help us generate and um, eventually then it led to very useful policy and investment interventions. Um, and on top of this was also helping to strengthen the capacity of the government in terms of future planning, in terms of future water allocation, helping them to better understand how to use the tool and, and use it even post the analysis on their own. Um, what was very interesting is that the initial Rwanda National Water Resources Master Plan had been done using the, the WIP tool. And it was a very specific request from the government to still use the same tool to update um, the next water resources master plan. And so this helped us to use that opportunity to build the capacity of the government also to use the tool going into the future. Um, so there were very many different uh, policy recommendations that we made out of this analysis. But for me, I think what was most important is that we left at a point where the government had the capacity to continue using the tool on their own. Um, if I recall well, I think some of the SEI colleagues, Annette and Brian, were thinking of, of having um, you know, a specific training course um, for, for the government um, team so that they can be more comfortable using the tool on their own. And um, on top of that was just being able to use this um, analysis to really communicate in a simple way for even the private sector um, interested actors and other um, organizations to understand how water was important for the economy in Rwanda and how um, also climate change is a big risk uh, for Rwanda, but eventually in a very easy, succinct, you know, using the different outputs to communicate very high level policy recommendations um, for a country that really needed um, this kind of analysis. So credit to 
at CIT, I really enjoyed my time working with them um, on this on this particular work, Annette, Brian, Eric, and, and Hanson. And um, I'd, I'll just pause here. And um, if there are any questions, I'll, I'll take them from through the chat box. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joy. And it really is so exciting to see how we can take WEEP and then incorporate it into other um, economic models um, and really, really understand and make um, decisions and investment decisions based on these at, at the you know country level. I know that um, the World Bank has also done it at uh, the sub-regional level um, and, uh, and also the multi-country level. Um, so uh, we really love to see how we can be used um, to uh, be making investment decisions for water resources um, because in the end, um, you know, we really want it to be applied um, and used. Um, and then also uh, we, you know, on the other end, uh, we have uh, researchers who are coming up with new ways to use the tools and new processes to represent. Um, so it's just really great to see the, the broad uses um, that we have with the tools. Thank you, Dre. Um, so now we are going to enter into the question and answer session um, of our event. Uh, we are running up on time here. Um, it really is great to see all the knowledge that is shared um, from our panelists. And um, also, I just wanted to do just one last reminder that we will be taking um, the uh, the attendee list um, to do our raffle after the end of the event, um, and we'll be contacting our winner um, for the free week training. Um, that's a $300 value these days. Um, so we're excited to share that and we will share that um, after the event uh, later today. Um, so thank you all uh, for those who have attended. Um, I'm going to take a look at the question answer. Um, I also see that quite a few questions are um, more technical questions about the tool and um, we will uh, definitely point to um, our training materials um, which are in the chat. Um, and also, uh, if there's a specific technical question, I think um, there are uh, specific um, training materials or chapters um, that we can point to. So um, yeah, for those of you who have left your emails there, we'll um, make sure to um, take a look at those. Um, but we are specifically looking for kind of more general questions um, to our uh, panelists, because um, there are experts here. Also, Lindsay put in the chat, um, of our video tutorials on YouTube in English. There's also many YouTube videos um, that are from uh, other uh, researchers and users um, who may have had similar um, issues or problems to, uh, to your yours as well. Um, I did wanna open it up, um, Kamir, Melina, and Joy, if you had any comments or questions to each other um, as you were seeing your presentations, I know um, a few of you kind of mentioned in there um, or if there was something else that you wanted to add after seeing kind of all these presentations. Um, so I don't know if any of you had um, kind of some either closing thoughts or responses um, to everything that you've seen today. Yeah, May, from May, my side. Yeah. Okay. Let's start with, uh, with Melina. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. It's for uh, Joy, because uh, in our work with Bolivia Watch, the uh, World Bank is interested to use a uh, WIP tool and the water balance to inform the uh, agriculture uh, projects. Then maybe uh, we can keep in touch, know more know more about your experience in Rwanda, maybe in other countries, and to facilitate, and if it is possible to facilitate this dialogue between the specialists and officials from the World Bank to uh, maybe share uh, the lesson, the, the learned lessons or, or your suggestions or, or yes, or, or thoughts about how we, we can connect uh, with uh, to inform agriculture projects. Yes, sure. Um, I've just I've just sent to you my email address in the chat box uh, privately. So yes, I'm happy to connect with you and and connect with with colleagues within the within the bank and and talk about how we used WIP in Rwanda and how it can be of help um, in in Bolivia. I I, I 
got to know about WIP in the same way. So I had a colleague who had used WIP before in another geography and, and he recommended it and yes, so happy to do the same. Great. Uh, Joy, I think you also were going to uh, either ask a question or a comment. <laughs> yeah, my mine was a comment and I think um, it's really been great just seeing how WIP has been used in other in other places, um, a lot of the California examples are really good now getting to know about um, Bolivia as well. I think it's um, it's really transformational and uh, there are plenty of examples there. Um, so I'll be I'll be looking out, you know, for the for the PowerPoint presentations that I can share also internally with colleagues on this side so that we can get to, you know, for people to know more about how the WIP has been used in many, many other different places. But it's been a great um, session. Thanks. Great. Camier. Yeah, so um, again, um, it's really been great uh, participating in this event and hearing about all the work that's being done around the world with WEEP. Uh, you know, the California Water Plan is the state of California's strategic plan for uh, water development and water management uh, and sustainability. So really, um, the fact that we have used WEEP and it, brought um, a lot of support and understanding of the use of the model in the last 20 years is a big accomplishment because 20 years ago, there was a lot of concern, even in the uh, California legislature, that the water plan was developed kind of in a black box. It wasn't transparent in the data it used or how it was prepared. And I think we have uh, really accomplished a lot in that regard. Uh, and the WEEP model, uh, when it comes to looking at future scenarios and conditions, has been a big part of that. And it's really helped us in forging a dialogue between the technical community and the policy community, the water management community. Uh, and that's a very important uh, feature of WEEP because it's understandable, accessible, and can be used in almost real time uh, scenario building um, events. I'll just note that we're not stopping. We're already working on update 2028 future scenarios. Uh, Paul Shipman and Abdul Khan are uh, leading that effort. We're going to continue to do advancement on decision scaling on the vo vulnerability assessment. And we're going to do evaluation of adaptation strategies based on uh, the, that vulnerability. Uh, we also are looking to help improve the WEEP groundwater routines as it applies to California. And we want to add a few more hydrologic regions to our more detailed Central Valley model. So uh, a lot of good things still to come. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kamir. Um, and I think uh, just, you know, like I said, we're running up on time here and it was so great to hear from everyone and all the details about um, different applications from our um, for our general users who sent in their testimonials. We're so happy to hear from you um, and thank you very much. Um, I think also um, as um, one of our um, uh, attendees um, and the SS, uh, SEI uh, US Water Program Director um, noted that we'd love to hear you know, suggestions on uh, what um, people would like to see in WEEP going forward. So if anyone wants to put that in the chat um, and we can you know, take that into consideration. We're a team here, we're a small team, but um, we are always trying to do a good job of responding to user needs and user interests. Um, and then I just want to plug one more time all of our training materials that Lindsay and Doug have been putting into the chat um, and that are available on our WEEP website. Um, and so uh, thank you all. And um, I think uh, that's uh, how we'll close the event um, as we're at just a couple minutes over. And um, thank you very much to our panelists. Um, and thank you so much to Jack. Uh, who really does carry all of us here um, and uh, the WEEP tool at SEI. So um, thank you all and congratulations WEEP for 50,000 users and 35 years and let's let it get to 100,000 or more and another 35 years of use. Um, so thank you all. Have a very nice day. Okay.